Coming up, chilling recordings of first responders at the OSU homecoming tragedy, allegations of political interference dog Governor Fallon, and a springtime storm makes for a wet fall morning. OU Nightly starts now. Stillwater police have released recordings of the harrowing calls from first responders at the scene of the OSU homecoming tragedy. Those recordings moments after the incident make even more real the chaotic, deadly scene that played out that Saturday morning. That's when police say the car driven by Audacia Chambers slammed into homecoming parade watchers, killing four and injuring more than 20 others. Later that day, police broke Chambers into jail. The video shows a suspect being processed in blood-splattered blue jeans, and officer speaks to Chambers for a few moments. At one point, someone removes the handcuffs officers placed on her at the scene, and finally, Adacia Chambers changes into an orange jumpsuit. Chambers is charged with four counts of second-degree murder. The courts ultimately will determine if she is competent to stand trial. And just shifting gears a little bit, it's beautiful if you're here in our area in Norman, but there are severe storms, even tornado watches in other parts of Oklahoma. Yeah, more towards the eastern part of the state. Sawyer? Yeah, that's right. So here you can tell those tornado watches are off to the east. They include Tulsa, McAllister, Ada, and Ardmore. And you can even see uh, where we have some severe thunderstorm warnings in effect for our area. And just looking off just to the west, off into the panhandle, we have frost advisories for later tonight. So we are getting a little wild weather here in uh, here in the state. Now, current temps outside right now, 70 degrees here in Norman, 79 in Lawton, where the rain did not quite make it. The rain formed right around our area and then moon, moved on off to the east. And then coming up in weather, I'll tell you more about this rain pushing east, your cooler temperatures ahead, and your game day forecast. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Sawyer. And Oklahoma Democrats call for an investigation after news reports claim Governor Mary Fallon and Attorney General Scott Pruitt interfered in a state medical investigation. The Dallas Morning News and the Tulsa investigative website The Frontier link the interference to a phone call Texas Governor Rick Perry made to Fallon. The allegation is that Fallon's office met with the Board of Medical Examiners and influenced its investigation into a Tulsa doctor accused in multiple malpractice cases. Fallon's spokesman confirms Perry asked Fallon's office to look into the medical examiner's investigation. A judge in Pottawatomie County has ordered a college student to stay in a mental hospital after shooting a fellow classmate. Jared Murray, a former East Central University student, was found not guilty of the crime by reason of insanity. While in prison, a fellow inmate claims that Murray threatened to harm the victim's family. Judge John Caravan Jr. believes Murray is a continued danger to society and needs further treatment. Hunter McKee joins us in the News Center. Hunter, more startling news out of Illinois about this hero turned villain. That's right, Ashley. The police officer in Illinois who staged his suicide apparently looked for a hitman to kill a village administrator that he feared would expose him of embezzling money. Lieutenant Charles Glinowitz's family is now under investigation for possibly being part of this. A police charity which donated $15,000 to the family plans to ask for the money back. And contradictions in his past life are dogging Repu Republican nominee Ben Carson. There are different scenarios in which Carson, referring back to his book, Gifted Hands, is mixing up his stories. Carson says he was an angry man when he was younger. He claims he's done unthinkable acts like stabbing, rock throwing, and brick hurling. But these violent stories are not consistent, and people from his past don't recall any of these incidents. The stabbing, attempted stabbing incident occurred when I was 13 or 14. And the Mexican Supreme Court ruled that a small group can use recreational marijuana legally. This now opens up possibilities of nationwide legalization. This decision allows four people to plant, transport, and smoke marijuana for recreational purposes only. That's what's happening around the world now. Ashley, back to you. Thank you, Hunter. And Norman's Town Center at University North Park is already a big hit with shoppers. But OU Nightly's Tyler Jones shows us there's more to it than just commerce. 
Target, GameStop, Payway, just a few recognizable places in Norman's Tax Increment Finance District, or TIF, University Town Center. TIFs use tax revenue from an area to develop and make improvements to that area. The project began in 2006 and has had its setbacks over the years, but has done what the city said it would do. You know, financially it has been successful and it's done what we th said it would do. It, it was, um, has not met people's expectations and that's, that's a, a, that's actually a bigger challenge. And those expectations aren't unwarranted. The original plans call for big name stores and restaurants in this area behind me, which is supposed to be called the Lifestyle Center. But the plans had to change in 2008 when the recession hit. The expectation that a, a different kind of retail environment is going to be created on the east side of 24. It's not more big box stores and strip mall. Um, Will it look like the lifestyle center that people originally had or something quite similar to that it remains to be seen. The plan also called for the area's anchor, the new Legacy Park, to be a small walkable park-like area with a fountain and some greenery. The updated plan calls for a multi-fountain pond with LED lights for nighttime light and water shows at the park's large amphitheater. If everyone were in a lawn chair, it's probably seven, 800 people uh, in the area. Um, so it's not a huge venue. Uh, it won't support, uh, you know, a, a big name entertainer or somebody like that that might come in, but it will support uh, much smaller uh, entertainment. After multiple funding and weather issues, the park's original 2008 opening date was put off. But with funding fixed and tax profits through the roof, the park has now been fully funded and open to the public. Tyler Jones, OU Nightly. The completion of the North Park project could take another 15 years at a total cost of $55 million to the developers. Coming up on OU Nightly, a new study about your health and knowing when to stay away from the gym. Plus, a celebration so sweet, it'll make your teeth rot. Stay with us. OU's campus last night using humor to address some serious issues. Courtney Boggs has the story. The issues of diversity and racism have been a hot topic on OU's campus. And last night, comedian W. Kamau Bell brought a whole new perspective on the issue. As Bell took the stage in the union, he asked, I wonder why this college brought me here and behind him played the infamous video of the SAE racist chant. Bell was blunt and comedic about the issues, and the students in attendance seemed to embrace it. And I love that he hit on all the main topics of what needs to be talked about. Human nature kind of separates people. Um, we just, we like to divide and, and find our niche and not stay outside of our comfort zone. Um, and so naturally that happens, and it's a great way to just break the barrier and he just says it straight up and it's perfect. Bell was invited by the Campus Activities Council because of his ability to tackle sensitive subjects in a funny way. His humor shed a different light on racism and helped OU promote diversity through laughter. And by the way guys, we would have loved to show you some footage from last night's comedy event, but no video cameras were allowed on the premises due to his contract. So unfortunately, it was an event open to the public, but not the media. And Courtney, we wish we could see some of that video. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your report. And now Leah Covington joins us with HealthBeat. And Aaliyah, yeah. Oklahomans are breathing a little bit easier now. That's right, Oklahoma's smoking rate has hit a all-time low. Adult smoking in Oklahoma has decreased by 19%. This means a decrease of about 78,000 smokers between 2013 and 14 alone. Previously ranked 47th for tobacco usage, Oklahoma now ranks 40th nationally. The decrease of, is a result of fo focused efforts to reduce and prevent tobacco use. A British media journal published a study showing that two or more sodas a day may increase the risk of heart failure in men. Researchers followed the diets of 42,000 Swedish men over 12 years, and they found that men who drank at least two sweetened beverages a day had 23% higher risk of suffering heart failure. Heart failure affects nearly 6 million Americans and 23 million people worldwide. 
And finally, a new report shows that there's such a thing as being too sick to exercise. The American Council on, of Exercise suggests postponing workout for about two weeks when experiencing flu-like symptoms like fevers, aches, and pains. But if you have a slight cold, walking in, up, in other str less strenuous workouts can help your cells kill bacteria and viruses more quickly. And it's kind of funny that that happened because I was supposed to work out tomorrow, but I think I'm starting to feel sick. <laughs> yeah, if, uh, getting a little cough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a <coughs> so always I guess, a good excuse. Yeah, and, and I, I hear rest is good too if you're sick, yeah. so I might just have to sleep in <laughs> Definitely tomorrow. Definitely rest and recuperate. And my time. That's my system. Thank you so much, Aaliyah. Thank Appreciate you. It. And still ahead on OU Nightly, the Thunder may look good on the court, but not on paper. And Sawyer is standing by to tell us a little bit more about those storms. We've beautiful skies across the state right now, except off to the east. I'll have more on that coming up. Forecasters say El Nino might hit Oklahoma hard this winter. The weather phenomenon is expected to cause our weather to be wetter and colder than usual. Snowfall could be 30 to 40 percent above normal. The worst of the storms could potentially start in January and last through March. And Sawyer is standing by to tell us a little bit more about the storms we are expecting right now. That's right, Ashley. So as you can see here across the state, you see those that squall line moving on off to the east. We actually have a tornado warning, a couple of them actually, down near the Dallas-Fort Worth area currently. And we had a few up just north of Springfield about 30 minutes ago. So wild weather across the state as of right now. And that all is associated with this cold front that's pushing through the state. Now, right now, this is at 10 p.m. tonight. You see that cold front is going to move on and off through our area, bringing with it some Canadian and Arctic air, 29 at 10 p.m. up in Denver, 31 in Albuquerque. And then as we go on into tomorrow, you can, we, when we get a little closer look, see at 4.30 right now, that cold front off to our northwest. And then as, uh, as we approach 10 p.m., that cold front is going to move on off to the southeast and through our area. And then at 7 a.m., it's down near Louisiana and still bringing that Arctic air with it. 20 degrees in Albuquerque, 30 in Amarillo, and then 47 for Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Now looking at our overnight lows for tonight, it's going to be a wild one. 60 degrees down in Idabel and then 35 up in Guymon with the central part of the state seeing mid 40s. So overall, it's going to be a little chilly as, as we go on through tomorrow morning. And the afternoon is still going to be a little chilly as well. 64 degrees in Norman, 63 in Oklahoma City, and then 69 down in Idabel. So mid to upper 60s across the entire state. Now looking at your game day forecast for uh, Saturday here in Norman kickoff, we're expecting 53 degrees. Mostly clear skies, those north-northeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So they will be blowing a little bit. Halftime, 47 degrees. Those, now we will have those uh, clouds clearing out by game time. So uh, mostly clear skies for the entire time, clearing out at halftime and a clear night, 44 at the end of the game. Now looking at our seven day forecast, we have that 90% chance for some showers and thunderstorms on off to our east right now. Now here in Oklahoma City, we won't have to worry about it. That dry line has moved on through our area and bringing with it those clear skies. So we're not expecting any more storm development west of that dry line, which is currently now sitting over near Tulsa. 74 degrees for today. And then that sun does come back out Friday and Saturday, 64 degrees on Friday with a low of 43. And then Saturday and Sunday, 60 degrees and 61 on Sunday, 38 degrees for a low on Saturday. And then the lows do come up a little bit, mid to upper 40s as we go on in through Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And rain chances do make a return to the forecast as we go on into Wednesday, but that is still too far out. The models are disagreeing a little bit, so we won't have to worry about that just right now. So overall, it's really nice. It's helped out the drought a bunch. The, ex the extreme drought is out of our area now, so this rain is, uh, is good and needed. So it's good for it to come on through. And a good weekend on the way. Yes, a good weekend on the way. Yeah. Game day is looking great. So if you're going out to the game, have fun. Yeah, glad it's clearing up a little bit in Oklahoma City. So. For a yes, yeah, Oklahoma weekend. City Norman, we're out of the area for now. We did have a, a couple of tornado warnings to our south, but uh, those, uh, as of right now, did not produce any tornadoes. We have some severe thorns off to the west, or off to the east, but we will keep, a, keep an eye on those. Thank Thanks, you. Sawyer. Appreciate it. And Thunder fans have a reputation for being loud. We all know that, but now they're getting a rep for something else. An organization has ranked NBA websites whose fans use the worst grammar, and out of 30 teams, Unfortunately, Thunder fans are second to last. And the Thunder play the Chicago Bulls tonight. They were on the court last night, and so was the Oklahoma women's basketball team. And Carson Williams is standing by to tell us more in sports. Carson? Yeah, BJ, and the OU women's basketball team tipped off its season last night inside Lloyd Noble Center. And Mike Stoops' defense is gearing up for a tough final stretch of the season. Don't go anywhere. Sports is straight ahead. Welcome aboard, I'm Carson Williams, and this is OU Nightly Sports. 
The Oklahoma defense has been one of the team's strong points this season. Mike Stoops' squad has given fans plenty of reasons to cheer this season, despite recently dealing with the injury bug. Zach Sanchez went down with an ankle sprain. Devontae Bond has been dealing with a nagging foot injury. And Jordan Evans is battling a, a knee injury as well. OU will likely get Bond and Evans back this week. And with a daunting schedule coming up, that will be key for the Sooners. You know, we, we kind of got everybody. We need that. Um, and, you know, that, just that part, you know, those parts alone, you know, is really going to help down this stretch. Uh, of you know of games, it's really important that uh, we have everybody uh, healthy because we got a big a big stretch. We got guys making plays across the front and, and putting pressure on the quarterback, and and that's going to be key down the stretch here. I mean, we we got to be able to to hold up at all three levels of our defense and, and play at a, at a high level these last four weeks. The number 17 Oklahoma women's basketball team kicked off its season last night with an exhibition game against Southwestern Oklahoma State. The Sooners used a big advantage on the glass, out-rebounding the Bulldogs 64-48. Oklahoma also took care of the ball very well, only allowing 12 turnovers to the Bulldogs 28 en route to a 111-73 victory. Head coach Sherry Cole was pleased with her team's play in the first game, but is still looking for improvement. I thought we did some good things. We played in spurts. Uh, we had some three-minute segments that were wow, and then we had the first five minutes of the second half was miserable. Um, but we bounced back from that, and the guys who came in responded to that and, and changed the tone again. So I, I thought we did some really, really good things. Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, and the boys are currently in the midst of a rare four games in five-night stretch, coming off its first loss of the season to the Houston Rockets. The Thunder hosted the undefeated Toronto Raptors inside the peak last night. Early in the first, Thunder running the break off a miss. Westbrook hits a cutting Stephen Adams for one of his 16 assists on the night, one shy of his career high. Later in the fourth, Durant finds an open Westbrook on the wing. Westbrook knocks down the, th the, the three. Thunder up eight. But DeMar DeRozan and the Raptors would use a 12-1 run to end the game. And the Thunder would drop its second straight game, 103-98. OKC has a chance to end its two-game skid tonight at Chicago at 7 on TNT. And maybe the best shot we'll see all year in the NBA came last night from Celtics forward Jay Crowder. Only problem, it didn't count. Come on, ref, that's got to be worth something, right? Ultimately, though, that was the difference maker. The Celtics would go on to fall to the Indiana Pacers 100-98. to And guys, that was pretty impressive. I'm not sure I could ever do anything like that. I definitely couldn't do anything it's, like that. So. It's, it's definitely pretty hard. I, I think you're right. I think you get you gotta get something for that. You yeah. know, yeah. like at least maybe like a half point. Yeah, maybe right. like a cool hat. I don't know. You know, a, tro <laughs> a little <laughs> trophy, just yeah, a little one, something. plastic. You know, for something. it not to count, that'd be a little bit frustrating. Yeah. I think. <laughs> Thanks, Carson. Appreciate it. And still to come, we'll have a look at your evening planner. And you can have it frosted with sprinkles or full of jelly. America's favorite dessert is being celebrated today. I'm Rebecca Walters at the OU Nightly Update Desk. Police have released 911 recordings and video of OSU homecoming crash suspect Adacia Chambers being booked into jail. In an effort to address prescription drug abuse, Oklahoma lawmakers met Wednesday for an interim study on painkillers with abuse deterrent properties. And Chesapeake Energy posted a loss of $4.6 billion in the third quarter. The revenue loss forces the companies to slash spending for the second time this year. Be sure to like us and follow OU Nightly on Facebook. That's it for now. Back to you in the studio. It's edible, doughy, deep fried, and sweet. And it was honored today. It's National Donut Day, my favorite day of the year. And there are actually two days of the year that honor donuts. The other falls on the first Friday of June. Fun fact, it was invented by the Salvation Army in 1938 to honor the women who served donuts to soldiers in World War I. Everyone loved National Donut Day so much that the National Food Council had to create a second day, which brings us to today. So, loved it. They were giving away free donuts on the South Oval this morning. Um, I didn't make it. I'm kind of disappointed, but oh, all my friends had a great time. Yeah. I didn't even hear that. Yeah, they were giving them out right as that rain was about to come through. So. And speaking of that rain, tonight? Yes, tonight is going to be a beautiful night outside in store. 66 at 7 p.m., 54 at 10 and 52 at 12 a.m. And those clouds will be clearing out, as you can see already outside. So it's going to be a beautiful night in store. Those storms are moving off to the east, and we got the sun here for the next several days. 
So it's looking very nice. All right, thanks, Sonia. Thanks. thanks for watching OU Nightly, brought to you by the Gaylord College on the campus of the University of Oklahoma. We'll see you guys back here tomorrow night, live at 4.30. Have a great evening. Good night.